show that even lower levels of fluoride can cause lowering of IQ and other subtle effects. You know, while these bits of further research are going on to elucidate what the absolute truth is, we should be taking a more precautionary stance and saying, OK, for the time being, we don't, we don't fluoridate. The concern about fluoride and the effect on the thyroid is multifold. Fluoride was used to suppress hyperactive thyroid, uh, especially in Europe back in the 40s and 50s. Uh, and the doses that were used to suppress thyroid activity are now uh, in the range that people are getting in the, in the U.S. from this vast overexposure to fluoride. There is a consistent body of literature that indicates that fluoride exposure does reduce thyroid function in humans and in experimental animals and that the exposures in humans associated with these effects are in the range of exposures that are expected with people who drink fluoridated water. A large percentage of the population in the United States does have some problem with the thyroid gland. The uh, large number of people who have hypothyroid, underactive thyroid now, may very well be related to the fact that there's so much fluoride in the environment. The ingestion of fluoride does affect the actions of the thyroid gland. A hypothyroid individual should definitely be concerned about drinking fluoridated water because it would take a very serious clinical condition and it could make it even worse. The effects of hypothyroidism, even probably borderline hypothyroidism, are things like depression, lethargy. When a person just doesn't feel like getting up and doing anything, uh, there are obviously a lot of things that can cause that, but low thyroid function is among them, and low thyroid function is a contributor, contributor to depression in, in some, perhaps many people. We have several studies, as a matter of fact, in the United States that have shown that uh, uh, fluoride can increase uh, bone fracture rates. The peer-reviewed studies in, in prestigious journals, such as the Journal of the American Medical Association, that showing increased risk of bone fracture based on the amount of fluoride that a person consumes, uh, and consuming it in the level that uh, people get from drinking fluoridated drinking water. We do know from animal studies that the uh, strength of the bone actually starts to decline the more fluoride you have in the bone. The fluoride makes the bone more brittle. Sufficient accumulation of fluoride in the bones seems to make them weaker. It makes them more dense on x-ray film, but this is associated with a more brittle structure. Of course, we're concerned about hip fractures uh, because that's a huge cost to the healthcare system. A hip fracture in the elderly in all too many cases means that, uh, that that person is not going to walk again or, or will even die. It's well known in the endemic fluorosis areas that the first sign of skeletal fluorosis is aching joints. The early stages of skeletal fluorosis are associated with bone and joint pain. Fluoride causes symptoms identical to arthritis. You cannot uh, distinguish the fluorosis or early fluoride poisoning from rheumatoid or osteoarthritis. It's very much the same. Nobody, to my knowledge, has yet looked carefully at fluoridated cities um, or fluoridated populations and looked at the symptoms of arthritis to determine whether or not fluoride as, is contributing to this uh, endemic or, or possibly uh, epidemic of arthritis that we have in North America. I think there's every reason to be concerned that today fluoride is one of the factors contributing to the epidemic of arthritis in this country. According to the CDC, one in three American adults have some form of arthritis. That's 68 million Americans. Supposedly the fluoride exposures in this country are not usually high enough to get to skeletal fluorosis but again, that's an area that really has not been studied well. I, I think it's likely, it's not a given, but I think it's likely that a lot of, of early stage skeletal fluorosis does show up as bone and joint pain, and, but it's never recognized as being skeletal fluorosis. If I was an arthritic uh, individual, 
I would be eliminating every possible source of fluoride exposure that I could think of. If you ask most dentists and ask them what they're putting in the water, most dentists would say sodium fluoride, pharmaceutical sodium fluoride, the same stuff that is in toothpaste. They have absolutely no idea that it's in nine out of ten cases hydrofluorosilicic acid and that hydrofluorosilicic acid is a waste product for the phosphate industry. This has come about because for maybe a hundred years the phosphate fertilizer industry put out two very very poisonous gases into the environment hydrogen fluoride and silicon tetrafluoride eventually they were required to capture those and they did it with a wet spray water and that water converts these two very toxic gases into hexafluorosilicic acid and it's this scrubbing liquor which is about 25 percent strong is put into tanker trucks, driven around the country, and added to our drinking water. If this stuff goes out the stack, it's an air pollutant. If it goes directly into the water supply, if they would take that scrubber liquor and dump it into the, to the local river, uh, it's a water pollutant. But if they put it into a tank wagon and sell it to somebody, a water authority, like magic, it's not a pollutant and they can take that then to your drinking water supply and not discharge it into your river. They just charge it directly into your drinking water supply, slowly bleed it in, and as magic, it's no longer a toxic pollutant. It's now a, what's called a product. It's never purified. It's not a pharmaceutical grade compound. It's a mixture of whatever that collects in the stack gases. And uh, it contains lots of contaminants, a lot of uh, heavy metals. When you're talking about adding fluoride to drinking water, you're not just talking about adding fluoridation chemicals. You're talking about adding all of the industrial waste byproducts that come along with it. In Oregon, where we've got 135 communities that already exceed uh, the drinking water standards for arsenic, uh, the idea of adding any more arsenic to drinking water, even if it's a small amount, just doesn't make a lot of sense. I find very few people who actually, with an open mind, read through the science understand the significance of the questions and what uh, the direction that all the new science is pointing in terms of the risks of fluoride, who still go on to say we ought to force it into everybody's drinking water. We have better ways of improving dental health today than using fluoridation. And let's be sensible about it. It, it doesn't work systemically. It works topically. It is unethical. It is unnecessary. It's ineffective. It's dangerous. I mean, this is so obvious. <laughs> it's, it's, it's so really very, very far-fetched. You have the teeth there. They are available for you. Why drink the stuff?